Hi, Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts back with a sequel to the requested video from one of the members who views not only our YouTube channel, but God's online church of love as well. Listen to this. I knew a lady was still dealing with dangerous relationships and the results, the price one has to pay. For staying. I know a lady who went to a house with somebody, visiting with somebody and their friends. Their friends happened to be from another country, but the husband was an American. And this is what was crazy. The husband had a wife and a daughter. The daughter was on crutches. The house was, I would say, packed with about eight to 10 people, the majority were males who could have overpowered this man at any time, but they chose to do nothing but sit and watch in horror and stay. The woman was obviously intimidated by this man. The girl was petrified of him. And he tells the girl on crutches with a cast on her leg. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out how she got that cast. He tells her to go get him something to drink from the refrigerator. She comes to bring it. And after she hands it to him, he kicks the crutches out from under her to make her fall. And then hollers at her to get her stupid behind up. I mean, just unnecessarily abusive, just for the sake of being cruel. That was his source of entertainment. And you know what the mother did? She stood in the doorway, half hidden, so he wouldn't take his wrath out on her. She was that locked in, that intimidated, that afraid, that even her natural motherly instincts would not allow her to go to her child's rescue. Now, because she couldn't get up fast enough, he kicks her while she's on the ground and kicks her again. And nobody does a thing. They're not long enough. The love making isn't good enough. The man ain't good looking enough. And there's not that much money to keep me or any other any other person with sense or self-esteem in that house. If I had been a visitor in that house, I would have gotten up, walked out of the house, ran down the street to a neighbor's, knocked on the door, said, you have to let me call the police. And I would have called the police after getting the, the number to that house. And I would have asked the woman if I didn't know what street we were on. Nobody did a thing. No women did anything. No men did anything. They sat there looking like idiots while he's kicking this child on crutches with a cast on her leg. And she had to crawl out of there in order for him to leave her alone. What kind of craziness is that? What mother would stay in that. There's a psych job, I'm telling you. That does not mean she didn't love her child. But there is a psych job that takes place and it's demonic as hell. And I meant to say it just like that. Because it locks you in it. It entangles you in this psychological, spiritual web that you can't seem to get out of. The door's wide open. You just don't have to go back. Cut everything loose in your life. You don't need the stuff. God can give you a fresh start. But do you? No, you keep going back home with your child. Here's another devastating story. I had a landlady. I told this story before, but for the sake of what's going on now, this needs to be told. I had a landlady. Now, you see the length of my hair, right? This is medium. Her hair went all the way down to here. This woman had 
the most, she had, she didn't have to press her hair no more than once. I forgot how long it was, uh, it was several weeks, but I mean, she could go forever. And the longer she went without pressing it, the silkier the waves would come in. That's how her hair would begin to revert. But now when you washed and blow dried her hair, it was bushy like mine. But when her hair took a press and it just got older and older, they would take on these beautiful, almost East Indian looking waves. Beautiful. Well, let me tell you this. The woman had beautiful skin. On top of that, the woman was, I would say maybe in her 40s. She was very, I mean, extremely kind to her husband. And you know why I knew this woman? She was my landlady. And because I was in the hair and she liked her hair being done, she would have me play in her hair. Well, what ended up happening, sweethearts, her husband treated her with such disrespect. And this woman would talk about him like she was still her boyfriend. I mean, she still found somewhere to get a crush for him. I don't get it. Excuse me. I don't get it. Uh, the man was ugly as sin. When I say the man was ugly, I wouldn't let my dog lay down. And I don't have a dog, but I wouldn't let my dog chase after that man. He was ugly. But this woman thought she had the creme de la creme. And I don't know what made her think that. He must have been doing something to wow her. I don't, I don't get it. This man would talk to her like a dog. So-and-so, get me this to drink. So-and-so, get me that. How come there's not enough this on or someone? And I mean, she waited on him hand and foot after working an eight to 10 hour job, catching the subway in the dead of winter, walking blocks, climbing stairs, the L train, going through all of that while he drove his car wherever he had to go. She didn't get a ride. She had to go the hard way. And listen to this, you guys. I was sitting downstairs with her one night. When I say she treated him like a king, I am not exaggerating at all. She fixed him this six-course meal. Collard greens, fish, cornbread, uh... Rice and gravy, uh, or grits and gravy, I forgot which one, but anyways, a few other items in there, and I was like, whoa, this woman gets down. That man sits down at the table with his ugly, I'm sorry, y'all, he was ugly. And he's hollering at her to get this and snapping to get that and just spitting out orders like, like she was an, uh, an indentured slave or something or worse. She brings him his plate. I mean, that woman could cook, y'all. She should have had a restaurant. She could cook. When he gets to eating the food, he said, you didn't put enough salt on the, on the greens. Now, I heard a trepidation in her voice, but I was too young to recognize she saw that was a danger signal. She saw it coming because she had been beaten so much. She knew what was, she knew when the clouds were overhead. And I was only 12, so I didn't quite pick up on it or else I would have eased out of there and told my father, she, he's getting ready to beat her, call the cops. But I didn't get it till after it was on. I'm sitting there and he says, come over here and taste these greens. And she said, I did, honey. And you could hear this trepidation. I couldn't figure out why she was so nervous until I saw what I saw. He takes the plate. I, I got to pick up this this plate here. This is a paper plate. He picks up the plate. Now watch me now. Taste these greens. Now the fork is in the plate. And she takes the plate, the fork, and she get, as she gets ready to put the fork to her mouth, he could have put her eye out. He didn't even care. She is ready to put the fork in her mouth, you know, the greens in her mouth. And he takes the whole plate and he slams it in her face, jumps up and just starts pummeling her. 
with punches and kicks and punches. And, and I'm like, oh, I, I couldn't believe it. I'm hollering. I'm running down the hallway, hollering, running upstairs. Pop, call the cops, call the cops. You know what my father said? I was mad at him. I really was. But I couldn't make him call the police. He said, Patty, we watched her. We have seen people call the police. When the police comes, she never wants to press charges. She never wants them to arrest him. She would defend him rather than let him get what he deserves. He has tried to put her out of the house and she begs him to let her stay. He said, Patty, you never get between a dog and his bone. That's all she is to him is his bone. He'll treat it any way he wants and she'll never want to leave him. She's that locked in. I couldn't believe it. I said, you gotta. He said, we've seen it. We've seen him kick her all the way out down on the step in her underwear. And she begged him with scratches and bruises and black eyes and all kinds, begging him to let her stay with him. Well, let me tell you what happened to Sister Girlfriend. I don't know if this will convince you ladies or you men who may be being abused by a woman to that degree. <sighs> this woman I'm getting emotional, so I'm trying to push it down because I watched it. When I talked to her, that woman had long hair. And she had pretty, pretty sunset brown skin. Very pretty, very pretty skin. She was a brown skinned woman. She was about my, about my height now, about five, six. And um, she was sweet and kind as could be. I never saw anything like this. She would not leave him. And as a result, our neighbor had let us know three years later that this lady, her name was Hattie. This lady died from complications of too many beatings. He had kicked her in the head, he had punched her, he had bashed her head against the wall. He didn't care how he hurt her, he just hurt her because he wanted to. When I went back to New York 10 years later, my neighbor sat on the porch and told me how she watched him beat her out into the street in the dead of winter in her underwear. And she begged him to let her stay, just like my father had told me. Now, here's the trip. When she died, all her hair was gone. Her hair was all short, raggedy, and she was skinny as a rail. She had aged by about 30 years. She says she just aged horribly. There was no place on her legs where there were not varicose veins. Um, she ended up in the hospital. It took her 10 days to die of complications from years of beating, repeated blows, repeated kicks in the gut, repeated punches, repeated, I mean, just beat, 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 beat. He, did, he wasn't slapping her around, y'all. I heard, I saw that fist get on her. He was punching her like he was beating a man. He knew he could. There was no respect to have. He had long since lost respect because she had none for herself. For some reason, she believed that she was to stay with her man through thick and thin. And he literally beat her to death. And as soon, listen, this is what happened at the funeral. He's flying all over her casket, bawling, putting on this big per performance. But it wasn't, she said it wasn't a matter of months. And that man was driving a big, long Cadillac, looking like a pimp. 
driving two women in his car, flossing from her life insurance policy. That's how heartbroken he was. And you want to dedicate your life to a fool like that and think your love will change him. Tell me when, tell, just, just tell us right now. Go on and send in some, some pictures of how you want your funeral to go down. Because that's what you're headed for. It's hard for you to believe because your heart's still locked in. But I give you a life and death warning, ladies. Leave and live or stay and die. I'm done. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. God bless you too. Take heed.